now we're really going to get into some really cool stuff. Um, I've been talking about this for a long time. I, I've had some opportunities to meet some people who've introduced me to some things. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let this, our next speaker be introduced. I'm going to start with a video first. So let's queue up the video for our next speaker. Back now at 748 with the latest discoveries that have some scientists asking if it is possible to live forever. NBC's Michelle Kaczynski is here with the tales. Hey, Michelle, good morning. Hi, good morning, Anne. You know, you talk to some of these top researchers, microbiologists, molecular geneticists, and it's almost hard to believe that what they're saying is real and not science fiction, that there's this growing community of scientists that sees aging as not necessarily an inevitability, but a problem that they believe can be fixed. In science labs around the world, right now, the race is heating up to reverse human aging. You heard right, not slow it down or fix it up, but turn it around by things like regenerating tissues and organs, using stem cells, computers. There's a printer that makes blood vessels, mice that regrow intestines. What really excites me is that I'm working on the, the world's biggest, oldest problem. So you think there's someone alive today who could live Thousands of years. Right, exactly. I don't think there's any limit. There's nothing that would stop people intrinsically from living thousands of years. At thousand-year-old Cambridge University, where back then people rarely lived past their 20s, scientist Aubrey de Grey is spearheading research, gathering experts to end aging. He sees it not at all as a necessity, but a problem, a buildup of damage and gunk in our cells. He just isolated an enzyme in bacteria that fixes that, and might work in human cells, too. Because when we get these therapies, the world is going to be very different. There are all kinds of ideas out there. Implanted computer chips to operate mechanical body parts. Here, why don't you take these? And a supplement created by American molecular geneticist Bill Andrews that he says slows the shortening of our chromosome tips, or telomeres, which is believed to be a main reason why we age. The main reason I want to live forever is it's fun. To be alive. Yeah, we got Inspired by his dad, who challenged him as a child to become a doctor and cure aging. The literature tells us that it's, I would say, 95% certain or better that if we can find ways to lengthen the telomeres, we are going to reverse aging. There are some doubters, but those on the front lines believe real breakthroughs in lifespan are possible soon. Sonia Arison wrote a book on how society will change when we start living to 100 or 200 thousand. If you know you have a thousand years to live, you might eat even more potato chips on the couch. <laughs> you might. <laughs> the idea of having a longer health span actually gives you more opportunity to try new things and be more adventurous. These scientists are pushing their mortal minds to the limit. You hurry up. <laughs> I promised that I would reach 150. Do as they put it, cure aging or die trying. And it's not just about extending lifespan, it's about extending health. And it's funny to hear them talk about this as if it was a car, that if you keep replacing the parts, theoretically, it could last forever. But, you know, this research is in the very early stages. There's not a lot of funding, and no human has ever lived past 125. Mm. 125 is pretty good, but, boy, wouldn't it be something if not to live further? What would we do with our time? What's your definition of soon here, that they're going <laughs> to yeah. come up with this stuff? Is this going to help me? 20 years? Wow, it could help you. They're it's serious. Right on the hairy they, yeah. Are you gonna be, you're going to live forever as a 70-year-old. How about that? <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> so please give a level 10 welcome to Dr. Bill Andrews. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you, Dan, and thank you, everybody, for having me here today. Um, I didn't know the video was going to be shown, and now my whole talk's been given away, so I, I hope you still enjoy it. I, you know, I will be up here for two hours. Uh, I'm going to be talking about this field of telomere biology. It's a brand new field of medicine. Uh, I think it's going to change the way everybody thinks about medicine, and it's going to be the future of pharmacy. Almost a lot of many products that you all will be selling in 10, 20 years from now will be things related to affecting the tips of your telomeres. And I've been in this field for, and I also want to mention that there'll be two other speakers right after me, Rick Despain and 
and uh, Lisa, whose name, as you'll see, I can't pronounce, but they'll both be talking about telomeres too after I get off the stage. But I've been in the field for 20 years now, uh, and which is how long the field has been existing. Uh, but I was surprised and glad to see that there are two people here that are also pioneers in this field. And I, I want to point them out there. In the back there, that's uh, Greta Blackburn. If you would stand up, Greta. Greta, she, she's actually just written a book uh, that talks about telomere biology. It talks about, a lot about the work I'm doing. And sitting next to her is David Cross, if he would stand up. Yeah, but I've been working with both of them now for six, seven years now. So I'm glad to see that they're here. This is a big, big field. So I would like to start off. I know that uh, Dan just introduced me. Let's see, and how do I start? Okay, good. So, <clears throat> so some of this will be redundant, but I'm gonna, I was going to introduce myself too. So uh, let's say I, I uh, actually led the research that discovered an enzyme called human telomerase. You learn more about that during my talk. But that really, the discovery of that enzyme just changed the face of a lot of research going on in anti-aging now. I placed, for that discovery, I was awarded second place for United States Inventor of the Year back in 1997. And I've been a telomere biologist for 18 years now. So, and I've been in biotech for 30 years doing also cancer research, heart disease research, and inflammation research. And I'm, this slide says 42 U.S. issued patents. It's being updated all, all the time. Dan said 43. Well, it is now 43 since making this slide. And I'm the founder, president, CEO of a company that's totally focused on telomere biology called Sierra Sciences. And so, <clears throat> 65 is the new 45. And isn't it actually wonderful how much modern medicine has done to make us feel so much younger and feel so much healthier than we did like even 50 years ago? Well, this has a lot to do with a lot of things that really had nothing to do with medicine. Some of these things are medicine, but our average lifespan has changed from 47 years to 78 years just in the last 100 years. And it's all because of things like better sewage, vaccines, even refrigeration. Think about how before refrigerators, you were eating bad food a lot that would get you sick and people would die from it. Then on, if you look over on the other side of the column, there's uh, coronary artery bypass surgery. Think about how many people are alive today because of that technology, chemo and radiation therapy, on and on. There's been a lot of things that have changed in the last hundred years that have really extended our lifespans and health spans. So isn't it nice to be able to look like this when we're 65? But let's not kid ourselves. That isn't this. And this is what I want to be when I turn 65 which is only five years from now, so we, I better hurry up here. So now there's a lot of theories on why we age, and I, I'm not going to go through all these theories here, but I just want you to see that there are a lot of them. And fortunately, there's a lot of people working on a lot of these. And I'm not going to go through all these yet either, but keep in mind that there's research. I'm going to be talking about one type of research, but there's all kinds of other research that's underway too to try to cure aging. And if, and if all of us fail, there's the bottom one there, cryonics. So we can always resort to that, and hopefully somebody, after we're all gone, will figure out a cure for aging and bring us all back. <clears throat> for a summary of these things, I recommend going to a website called www.manhattanbeachproject.com. Uh, all the speakers, all the researchers spoke at this conference, and it's all on video and you can listen, learn more about these different uh, ways of curing aging. Now, I said there's a lot of theories and I, since I am so eager to cure my own aging, I kind of just tend to believe in all of them. I, uh, I practice everything I can do to lengthen my lifespan and health span according to what everybody says. But I, I think of each one, each theory on aging as a stick of dynamite that's burning inside of our cells. And so we have all these different causes of aging all occurring simultaneously. But if you think about it, it's really only the stick of dynamite with the shortest fuse that we have to worry about at first. And so the question that a lot of researchers are asking right now is, what stick of dynamite has that shortest fuse? 
We do know now that mice, they have their own sticks of dynamites, and their stick of dynamite with the shortest fuse is almost certainly not the same that affects humans. So what is the difference? What, what is believed that mice are by age due to oxidative stress and mitochondria dysfunction, whereas humans you know, might be aging by what, what I'm going to be talking about today. So again, as I just said, two of these theories, the oxidative stress theory and the mitochondria dysfunction theory of aging, appear to be what affects aging in mice. And, and in fact, 99% of all the animals on the planet, or 99.99% of all the animals on the planet, probably age like this, but humans are unique. And I'll be talking about that later, too. So what I'm going to be talking about today is what I believe is the shortest fuse, the dynamite with the shortest fuse in humans, and that's the telomere theory of aging. I believe that the thing that controls our aging is the length of our telomeres. OK, so the, the title of my talk today is Bad Things Happen When Telomeres Get Short. That's a common premise. And, and also, I want to say that, that nothing is Nothing bad happens when they get long. OK, now, I've mentioned this word telomere a lot. What is it? OK, so what I want to do is right now focus on what a telomere is for those of you that don't know. And to do this, I need to zoom in on a human being, because telomeres are very small structures inside the human body. And so if we zoom in, we can see that a human is made up of 100 trillion cells. And most of those theories about why we age say that we age because our cells age. And so if we could figure out a way to control the aging in our cells, that should affect the aging in ourselves. All right, so telomeres are very small structures. We're going to have to zoom in even further. <clears throat> and we find that every cell contains a nucleus. And inside these nuclei are found chromosomes. Now, chromosomes contain all the genes that give us our hair color, our eye color, make some of us tall, make some of us short, affects a lot of different traits. And these genes are all found in these blue structures called chromosomes. And so we're going to focus now, we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Remember, our telomeres are very small. We're going to focus now on, on a particular chromosome. And you can see that chromosome is made up of two arms. The bottom thing from left to right is one arm. The top thing is another arm. Inside each of those arms is found this very, very long string of beads called DNA. The beads are actually called bases when you talk to a molecular biologist like me. And to fit this long string of beads inside of a chromosome, it's all coiled up like a slinky. So from one end to the other, it's go, the DNA goes all the way from one end to the other of the chromosome. OK, so where are telomeres? Well, we're here. Telomeres are the very tips of our chromosomes. And <clears throat> if we unravel the, t the slinky that's inside the tip of our chromosome, we can see that a telomere is about 15,000 bases in length. At least it is when we're first conceived. Okay, so as soon as our cells start to divide, our telomeres start to shorten. And as, uh, when it gets down to about 5,000 bases, well, let's say first, telomeres are about 15,000 bases in length. They shorten about 5,000 bases before we're even born to about 10,000. That's because of a lot of cell division that occurs from going from a single cell to as many cells as it takes to make a newborn baby. Then, as we develop even further, and we have more and more cell division, our telomeres shorten more and more until they get down to about 5,000 bases, and then that's when we typically die of old age. And <clears throat> there's nothing you can do about this. And let me go over this again. There's, we're conceived at 15,000 bases, we're born at 5,000 bases, and we die of old age at 5,000. Let's see, 15,000, 10,000, and 5,000. And when you grow human cells in a Petri dish, you find out that when the telomeres get down to about 5,000 bases, the cells totally lose their ability to function. And there's all kinds of mutations that occur, chromosomal rearrangements that occur, that make the cell very unhealthy. And so this is the data that's really saying that there's a correlation between the length of our telomeres and our health and our aging. So <clears throat> this is the first clock of aging 
that's been ever discovered in humans. Nothing, every theory that's ever been explained about aging has never been shown to be a kind of a clock that it would explain why, you know, you can look at a person and you can tell plus or minus five years how old that person is. But if you look at a, a cat or a dog, you'll find that they die of old age long, long before humans do. So there's, there's, there's clocks that are ticking inside of us, and some animals have a different type of, type of clock than, than others. And humans, you know, as I said before, is the telomeres. And what's really key is that there's absolutely nothing we can do about this right now. No matter how well we eat, no matter how much we exercise, and no matter how much we do, everything that our doctors tell us to do, our telomeres are still going to shorten. And there's a, there's a uh, theoretical maximum lifespan that's been calculated by at least three or four different research groups saying that a human cannot live beyond 125 years. Nobody has ever lived that long. In fact, the longest person that's ever lived is a woman named John Calment who lived to be 122 years, years old. She died, I think, about five or six years ago at 122. We we're kind of looking forward to see <laughs> would she actually reach that theoretical maximum of 125 and possibly exceed it? But she actually died from choking on a cherry pit. So we don't know, we don't know how long she would have lived otherwise. But the, uh, it, it's, it's the only clock that, it, that this telomere shorting very accurately explains this 125-year maximum. When we take human cells in a Petri dish and calculate the, the rate the telomere is shortening, it predicts that ex almost exactly that humans have a maximum lifespan of 125 years. <clears throat> so the Nobel Prize was awarded, and just to show you that this is not just some shabby type of science. The, the medical community has really recognized this as key. The Nobel Prize was winner, awarded to people I want to congratulate right now, Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Greider, and Jack Sosak for doing the pioneering work that led up to the research that I started about 20 years ago. Next, I want to just talk about why telomeres shorten to begin with. I keep saying they shorten when our cells divide, but why? Um, a lot of people used to think that it was only because of degradation. In fact, the people used to think that when they first started noticing that telomeres shorten, they started thinking this was a cause or a result of aging. Now we know it's a cause of aging, and I'll be showing data to support that soon. But the question is, why does it shorten? And to, do, to explain it, I want to kind of think of DNA. Remember that long string of beads? Think of it as a layer of bricks on top of a brick wall. And that's what's shown here. <clears throat> and so when a cell divides, the DNA needs to be duplicated or replicated so that the same DNA goes into each of the daughter cells. Okay, so now, in order to make a new layer of brick on that brick wall, so that one can go in one direction, one can go in the other, and the cell, when cells divide, you need a brick layer. So inside of every one of our cells, we have a brick layer that's going along on top of this brick and laying down a new layer of bricks on the brick wall. And this will be the new chromosome. And so, <clears throat> now this is a long, tedious process. And so remember that DNA is like 100 million bases in length. I may have forgotten to mention that before. So it's, it's going to be fairly accurate of that re result in mutations. And so let's move over to the telomere now, because this is where we're really interested. And when the bricklayer gets there, uh, the bricklayer is on top of this wall. It's a, kind of a dumb place to be, but <laughs> as you're going to see, the bricklayer can't lay the last brick, because when they step backward, they fall off this wall. And as a result, the new chromosome that's made, or the new layer of bricks on the brick wall that's made, is shorter than the previous one. So as a result, the, next, the telomeres get shortened every time the cell divides. And so this is, you know, I, I'm showing this as an analogy, but it's, it's remarkably very similar to what's occurring inside of our cells. The brick layer is actually called DNA polymerase 1, and it actually cannot replicate the very tips of the chromosomes for similar reasons. So let's go through this. The cell is now going to divide again. The DNA needs to replicate. The brick layer again comes along to the telomere. And again, the brick layer is going to fall off, and the telomere is going to be shorter. And again, there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. No matter how well we eat, no matter how much we exercise, 
And no matter how much we do everything that our doctor tells us to do, we cannot stop this. Okay, so I said we can't stop this, but there are definitely things we can do to accelerate this telomere shortening. And that's anything related to an unhealthy lifestyle, like obesity, lack of exercise, psychological stress, and smoking. All these things generate free radicals that will get inside of our cells and cause the, the free radicals to actually cleave the telomeres and actually accelerate the shortening faster than the previous type of shortening that I showed. But there is something we can do about this. We can lose weight, we can exercise, we can meditate, we can quit smoking, and a host of other things. Just leading a very healthy lifestyle will decrease the rate of our telomere shortening. And we don't want this to happen. This, is, this accelerated telomere shortening is the reason why, is one of the reasons why, a lot of us seem to age faster than others. And most of you have probably seen that, most notably with smokers. So I call this accelerated telomere shortening. And the previous kind of stuff that I was talking about is, if I can get this, is called, I call it basal level telomere shortening. And the basal level telomere shortening is the thing that we really can't do anything about yet. All right, but of course, that's why I'm up here. This is what my research is all about. I'm trying to figure out a way to control this basal level telomere shortening. Okay, the best proof that telomeres affect aging is shown with the fact that some people are born with short telomeres. And these kids, they suffer from a disease called perjuria the disease of short telomeres. These kids suffer from all the same age-related ailments that normal old people do. They have a maximum lifespan of about 20 years. And if we could figure out a way to stop this telomere shortening, this could be a cure for this disease. And I can tell you, all the scientists that I work with are very interested in this. There's only like 15 kids in the world at any one time that suffer from this disease, but it's a horrible disease and it would be sure nice to figure out a way to cure this disease. But this disease brings home the point more than anything else I know, and that's bad things happen when telomeres get short. A key thing that I want everybody here to remember when they leave. Now, it doesn't just affect our, these kids. It also affects everything else in normal aging. I think you'd be amazed to find out how much telomeres play a role in everything related to our health. And what I want to do is I just want to talk about a few diseases. Cancer. Okay. So what's been, it used to be thought that, that, that if you produce this enzyme called telomerase that I'm going to talk about later uh, in cells, it would cause cancer. But now it's well known that it, it's going to do the exact opposite. It's been shown that in a lot of scientific publications, especially published in just the last two to five years, that when our telomeres get short, it causes chromosome rearrangements and mutations to the chromosome. We see this in live people, and we also see this in human cells grown in a petri dish. And these mutations and chromosome rearrangements cause the cancer. Okay, so keeping your, so this is one of the main reasons why cancer is so much more prevalent in the elderly is because they have shorter telomeres. So if we can keep the telomeres long, this would decrease the risk of cancer. What's more important is one of the other main causes of cancer is a weakened immune system. Now, there's been people telling me that we actually all get cancer seven times a day, but our immune system fights it and destroys the cancer, and so that's why we're not aware of it. But if the immune system gets weak, then then we increase our chances of getting cancer. So if we can keep the telomeres long in our immune cells, this would be a very great way to fight cancer. Atherosclerosis. Uh, in my research, working with other people at Geron Corporation, where I used to work, and now at my present company, we've done a lot of work looking at endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells. These are cells that line the blood vessels. And we have shown that where there's plaque that's built up inside of our blood vessels, the cells adjoining that, that plaque also have short telomeres. It's well established that when telomeres get short in our endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells, that leads to plaque buildup. 
So if we could find a way to keep the telomeres long in our, our cardiovascular cells, that would be also a way to decrease the risk of atherosclerosis. Alzheimer's disease. I call this the disease worse than death. Um, we've now shown that, that uh, people with Alzheimer's disease have shorter immune, telomeres in their immune cells, also in their brain cells called astrocyte cells and their Schwann cells, cells that are involved in, in nerves. <clears throat> and if we could figure out a way to keep telomeres from shortening there, this might even be a way to treat Alzheimer's or at least prevent it. And I'm going to be showing some exciting data pretty soon that actually will show that we actually might be able to reverse Alzheimer's disease by lengthening telomeres. Osteoarthritis. So, you know, we all have these joints and we have chondrocyte cells that line our joints. And when we do a lot of wear and tear on our joints, those chondrocyte cells get killed and stripped away. Well, that's okay when we're young because other cells will divide to replace those chondrocyte cells and we'll be just back to normal again. And that's one of the remarkable things about human bodies is our ability to replace damaged tissue. Well, why doesn't that exist all the time? Why does it stop working when we get old? And that's because of telomere shortening. And so when our telomeres in our chondrocyte cells get too short so they can't be replaced, that's when we get bone on bone and we get osteoarthritis. Osteoporosis. A lot of you might know a little bit about how osteoporosis goes. There's two types of cells. Bones are remodeled all the time. They're being destroyed and remade. And the cells that destroy them are called osteoclasts. They kind of go gobble on, uh, the, gobbling up the bone. And then right behind them is osteoblasts that create new bone. Well, when the telomeres get short, uh, let's, see, let's say to make new bone requires cell division more than, than tearing down bone. And so when the telomeres get short in our osteoblasts, our osteoclasts are the only ones working. They're destroying bone, and the osteoblasts can't remake it. And so our bones get weak, filled with holes, and we, we get osteoporosis. Again, if we could figure out a way to keep the telomeres from shortening in our osteoblast cells, this could be a cure or treatment for osteoporosis. Skin aging. I mean, we're losing skin all the time from our hands or all over through our body. If most of you might know that the main component of dust in your house is skin, skin that you've lost. Well, you're losing that skin all the time, and other cells deeper inside your skin have to divide to replace those cells. Well, when the telomeres get short in our skin cells, the basal level skin cells, then we can't do that anymore, and that's why our skin gets thin when we get older, because it can't replace the lost skin anymore. And it's also a big reason for us getting age spots. So macular degeneration, another disease. This is the number one cause of blindness in the elderly. Okay, so most people that lose their vision in the elderly probably do result from macular degeneration. This is caused by cells in the back of the eye called retinal pigmental epithelial cells. And when the telomeres in those cells get short, we get macular degeneration. Again, I'm going to say this over and over again. If we could find a way to prevent telomere shortening, this could be a cure or treatment for these diseases. Liver cirrhosis. This is kind of a, a fun one because um, <clears throat> we kill liver cells whenever we're drinking. And that's okay when we're young. We can drink all we want uh, because other cells are going to divide and replace those cells. But when the telomeres start getting short in our liver, they can't divide and replace anymore. So when we get older, the liver essentially just dies without cells replacing it, and we get liver cirrhosis. So if we could find a way to prevent telomere shortening in our liver cells, we could drink all we want. And uh, uh, that would be nice. Um, now, unfortunately, and this is new data that I haven't updated these slides to show yet, um, it's now been shown that drinking alcohol accelerates telomere shortening, just like smoking does. And so, uh, uh, you know, I always say, what's the point of living a long time if you're not living? Okay, so, so drink. I, cause, and, and do some other things that I'm going to talk about because I, I believe very strongly that within the next 20 years, we're going to have treatments to fix all the problems that's causing from you guys, ha, ha, guys having all the fun you want. Okay, muscular dystrophy. 
Uh, again, this is just another example. Muscle cells die. It, 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 you know, you got a, a mutation to a gene called, I uh, can't remember the name of the gene, but the, uh, uh, you get mutations of that gene and the cells die, and that's okay when you're young. You, you have cells that replace them, but even midlife, you run out of those cells because of telomeres, and so you get muscular dystrophy. AIDS. Now, this is a really classic example, and this is probably where the first clinical studies are going to occur in trying to show that telomere, telomere biology can affect disease. When you get when you're infected with the HIV virus, or hopefully nobody here is, but when a person is infected by the HIV virus, the HIV virus gets inside of our immune cells. And then our immune system tries to fight that virus, and it's unsuccessful. So the cells just keep dividing and dividing and dividing and try to, try to kill themselves because they're, they're essentially they're, they're, the virus is inside of immune cells. So after a lot of cell divisions, the telomeres get so short that the immune cells die of old age when we're still young. And that's why, remember in the early 80s when people were first discovering AIDS, the doctors were first discovering AIDS, they were really surprised to find that their patients had no T cells or immune cells. And it was a big mystery as to why is that? Well, now we know it's because the telomeres got short in the immune cells and caused the cells to die of old age. And that's, that's actually the main reason people die from AIDS isn't exactly because of the virus. It's because of when the immune system disappears, they suffer from all the secondary infections, including Carposi sarcoma, which is a, which is a cancer. But they, they die of all the secondary things that, that, cause, that affect them after their telomeres get short. We believe, and this is why it would be a great clinical study, we believe that if we could keep telomeres long in people infected with the HIV virus, they could probably live a normal life. Even though they'll always contain the virus, they can probably live a normal life and not have to suffer from any of these things. So in general immunity, the same thing. We all, when we get older, suffer from something called immune senescence. That's where our telomeres get short and our immune cells and our immune systems just don't work as well. And that's why we get sicker, sick more often when we're older. So I've, I've just went through some of these things in detail, but here's a list of all diseases that I knew probably like five to ten years ago that have been shown to be affected by telomere length. And this list has almost grown. In fact, right now, I'm not aware of any single diseases that humans suffer that aren't affected by the length of our telomeres, except for autoimmune diseases. There's been no, no publications correlating the length of our telomeres to autoimmune diseases. But that doesn't mean that somebody isn't going to figure out that soon, and I wouldn't be surprised if when we figure out a way to lengthen telomeres, we find that people's autoimmune diseases are also treated or cured. So again, we come back to this whole business of bad things happen when telomeres get short. We want to keep them long. There's nothing wrong with a long telomere, and we just all would be super, super healthier if we could keep our telomeres long. And that's the message that I want to give, is when cells divide, telomeres get shorter. So what we really want to do is we want to decrease the demand on our bodies to have cell division. Now, <clears throat> one example of a really important thing about cell division and telomere shortening is the whole stem cell field. I speak very often at stem cell conferences because of the fact that, that stem cells, the whole field of stem cells is suffering from this problem of telomere shortening. Now imagine, let's say, uh, uh, homologous stem cell transplant. Okay, you, you take stem cells out of your adipose tissue or out of your bone marrow, and then the doctor first cultures those cells outside the human body. So there's a lot of cell division to grow up these stem cells. They get rid of the cells that aren't stem cells and just purify the stem cells and make a lot of them. So there's a lot of cell division that occurs. So as a result of all that cell division, the telomeres got shorter and the cells got older. So when the cells now are injected back into the person, even though they're from the same person, the cells going back in are older than the person that it came from. And so the stem cell field is realizing that when, during the culturing of the cells, they need to have something that prevents telomere shortening. So they're very, very interested in the research that I'm doing to try to find, so when we come up with something, they can just add it to their cultures and the stem cells will divide without the telomere shortening. 
Now, the same is true for some doctors don't actually culture them outside the body. They just pull them out and then re-inject them right away. But these cells still have to divide a lot of times inside the body in order to uh, fix the problems that are be trying to be fixed. And so the telomeres still get shorter. <clears throat> some other examples, and one highlighted by human growth hormone, you know, again, let me, let me say, what's the point of living a long time if you're not living? And I believe that human growth hormone is a, actually a good thing. I know a lot of people taking human growth hormone. It's having amazing effects on them. They're very, they're happier. They look younger. They're healthier. And so I encourage it. But human growth horm hormone works <clears throat> by stimulating uh, IGF-1. And then IGF-1 stimulates bone cell and muscle cell proliferation. So proliferation means cell division. So lots of cell division. And that's why you look and feel younger. It's because of all this boost of youth from all these cells. But in fact, the tissues are actually getting older because of the telomere shortening. But again, don't worry about it because in 10 to 20 years, we're going to have something that's going to fix that problem. Now, it's not just human growth hormone. It's also other things like um, microdermabrasion. Microdermabrasion, a lot of Women, some men do this. They, they treat their face with acid or r really rough treatment, sandpaper kind of thing, that kills a lot of cells in your skin. And that causes your body to induce more cells, so especially the fibroblast cells. The fibroblast cells will divide a lot of times, and because of all that cell division, you, your face looks younger. But it's really older, okay, because of the telomere shortening. One other example is, is uh, uh, immune boosters. Okay, so you're, you're sick, you've probably just gone through chemo or something like that. Uh, doctor gives you an immune booster to build your immune system. Well, that requires a lot of cell division. Well, let's say another example is, let's say you think you're coming down with a cold, and so you take something like echinacea or something like that to, to stimulate immune cells to divide to help fight that cold. Well, again, it's causing a lot of cell division, you're short, causing telomere shortening, and as a result, you're aging your immune system a little faster than you'd like to be. But again, we'll have something, I guarantee it. So, <clears throat> so the question is, does, human hormone, hor does growth hormone cause telomere shortening? And I've got that question here because actually nobody's done the experiment yet, but all the twos and twos that you can add together says that it should, just because of the fact that it's inducing cell division, which we know for a fact. Uh, it's just that nobody yet has actually, this is such a new field that a lot of stuff is still just best guesses, but I think this is a pretty best guess right now that, that uh, telomere shorten when you take human growth hormone, but I'm looking forward to somebody actually testing that to find out. All right, so I've been talking about all the bad news. What's the good news? Okay, so what can we do about it? Well, first, I think it's very important to measure the length of your telomeres we all should know how long they are because there is something we can do about it. And I'll be, that's what I'll be talking about later. There's something we can do about it now and there's gonna be better things we can do about it in the future. But there's several, okay, so, so when we look at cells, this is actually data from one company called SpectraCell, but I'll be talking about all the other companies too. Uh, <clears throat> when you look at, when you take blood from people of different ages and look at the length of their telomeres, you see a pretty much kind of close to a straight line where the younger people, if you look at the bottom of this graph, you see the age of the people and the y-axis of this graph shows the telomere length. And you can see the young people have longer telomeres than the older people. And it kind of looks like it levels off at the end there, but that's actually not true. It's just that the, this particular company did not have a lot of old people to measure at the time. So, but it actually continues shortening. <clears throat> now, if you get your telomeres measured, and let's say you're 50 years old, oh, for, that's, a, that's the normal line, it's, from, it's been made from about 800 people. But when you, if you're 50 years old and get your telomere length measured, you want to find out that your telomere length is where that green dot is, okay? Because that says you're normal. Now, better than that would be to have it there, okay? That's saying that you are biologically, well, you're chronologically 50, but you're biologically Looks like you're more like 42 there. If you move over to the right to see where that green box would be at the, for the age. Now where you don't want to be is here. That's saying that you have done something, you've gone through some trauma, you've, 
you've done something to accelerate uh, division. I, I've measured telomeres of a lot of people. Uh, and for instance, when I find somebody that's a lot shorter than they should be, every single time I find that there's been some trauma in their life. And <clears throat> a classic example is one person I measured, he was only like 34 years old, and he had telomeres of, the f of a 50 years old. And I said, What's, I asked him if he had any explanation for this, and he said, oh yeah, I have used to ride motocross and my broken bones about 20 times in motocross. And so that causes a lot of stress on the body, and that causes telomere shortening. Now, you also don't want to be here. This is, this is, uh, these are getting to be examples of like progeria, especially right here. This is where a progeric kid is born. Uh, their telomeres are so short, they're already like a 80-year-old when they're first born. Now, this is really where we all want to be. This is like when you're uh, in your 80s, you, you have young telomere, short, long telomeres like this. Then that's why some of these people are, are uh, that you see that older seem to be so much younger. It's because they have long telomeres. And here's where you don't want to be because that's the shortest telomere, and that's actually where when, when your telomeres get that short, you're dead. You, you cannot, your cells cannot function, and you just lose it. So <clears throat> there's several different methods for, curing, for measuring telomere length uh, shown here. And what's good is look at two of them have come up with some new technology that's looking at short telomeres. Now, I showed that the average telomere length is important for aging, but it's really just a biomarker for the abundance of short telomeres. Now we know that it's really not the average telomere length that makes a difference, it's the abundance of short telomeres that makes a difference. So you want to decrease the chances of you having a lot of very critically short telomeres. Now, there's good news is that there are places you can go right now to get your telomeres measured. There's uh, the three are, there's SpectraCell, Telome Health would do one method, repeat diagnostics would do another method, life length would do the short telomere stuff. That's why I actually prefer life length for measuring telomeres right now because it's the only company that's commercially measuring the shortest, the abundance of short telomeres. Okay, so when we look at telomeres in cells grown in a petri dish, we actually, when we, if we measure the telomeres using any of these techniques, and at various periods of time, you can see the PDL at the bottom of this graph stands for population doubling level. So that means the cell has divided, let's say, 30 times. That's, that gives us a 30 PDL. And then we look at the y-axis, again, that's telomere length. We see it's a fairly accurate decrease in telomere length, pretty much of a straight line as the cells divide, which would be predicted if this basal level telomere shortening is shortening at a very specific rate like a clock does. Now, when we actually look at telomere lengths in people and look at age, where age is now the y-axis, not the number of cell divisions, we find it's still pretty much a straight line. And this is because some of our cells, especially our blood cells, a lot of them divide at a pretty consistent rate throughout life. Now, it's not always this straight a line. A lot of studies have come out with data that looks like this, where it's all scattered all over the place. And, but you still, in all cases, you always see that the line is decreasing in size, so that there's a correlation between telomere length and et cetera. But this, the fact that this data is so scattered doesn't mean that telomeres don't play a big role. There's a lot of reasons why it's scattered besides that. And the weak correlation is because a lot of people are born with different length telomeres. All of us are, we, when we're first born, they're not always 15,000 bases. Sometimes they're 14,000 bases. Sometimes they're 16,000 bases. And so as a result, when you get older, you're going to find a big variation in telomere length. <clears throat> now, also, people with different rates of cell division. I've already told you that I've seen people that were 34 having telomere lengths of 50 because of, they had a lot of trauma, which caused a lot of cell division. And then there's <clears throat> just different environmental factors, which I'm going to be talking about in a little while here, about things that, that and I've already talked a little bit about, that cause telomere shortening. Okay, so. Telomere shortening right now, for at least for looking at the average telomere length, is good for looking at major differences only. So if you, you, have, a, if you have really, really short telomeres, average telomere length will show that to you. <clears throat> but it's also good for doing scientific studies where you've got large populations because then all this variance uh, disappears because of all the people that you have in the study. 
So measuring the shortest telomeres is really the best way to go. Okay, so <clears throat> the next thing to do, and that's what I was going to talk about, the environmental factors, there are things that you can do right now. So if you find out you have short telomeres, there are things you can do right now to help yourself. And that's decrease the rate of the telomere shortening. Actually, decrease the accelerated telomere shortening that I talked about. Now, the, uh, <clears throat> of course, let me just say that I'm going to talk about exercise in a second, but I mentioned that free radicals get produced from an unhealthy lifestyle that cause telomere shortening. They actually cleave the telomeres. But there's also inflammation. So poor lifestyle like obesity, smoking, things like that, induce a lot of inflammation in our cells. And as a result, the inflammation causes more rapid cell division, which actually causes faster telomere shortening. So we want to decrease both of those. But as uh, Dan mentioned, I'm an ultramarathon runner. I actually strongly believe in the more intense your endurance, the longer you'll extend your lifespan and your health span. And, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm very eager to live forever. And so I'm doing everything I can possibly do to extend my lifespan and health span. There's a lot of scientific support now for these things. And a lot of this, a lot of data I'm going to show is only new in the last, like, five years. <clears throat> this is one study that was done in Germany where you see the first two groups are young people. Some are athletic, some are not. Okay? Well, you don't see much of a telomere difference in young people if they're athletic or not. It's only when you get older that you find that the people that are unathletic have shorter telomeres on average than the people that, that, uh, uh, that do exercise a lot. This is a very statistical thing. This is now done in granulocyte cells, which is a type of immune cell. But they've also, the same study looked at the lymphocyte cells, which are also immune cell, in these same people, and found the same result. A very reproducible result. Older athletes have longer telomeres than younger, than, than, than old non-athletes. Not true in young people, just true in the old people. More studies. <clears throat> this is a study done in Colorado, where, again, we see that the young people Pretty much, whether they're sedentary or exercising, they do not have any difference in their telomere lengths. But when they get older, you see that the older sedentary people have shorter telomeres than the active people. And again, VO2 max, shown, looking on the right graph now, VO2 max is, is something that's controlled by genetics, but it's also controlled by exercise. The more you exercise, the more intense your endurance, the higher your VO2 max. And here again, you can see that the higher your VO2 max, the longer your telomeres. So again, it's really saying exercise is important. I'm going I'm to show lots of data here on exercise, because I really believe this is the number one most important thing that all of us should be doing, is to keep our telomeres long. Here's another study. This, I forget where this was done, but again, they looked at that people of different levels of exercise found telomeres get, are longer. This isn't because the telomeres are getting lengthened. It's because they're decreasing the rate of their telomere shortening as a result of their exercise. Now, this is a, a study that showed a lot of immune cell relationships. Like, so looking at just the immune cells of older versus younger people. Uh, I'll let you just read through this slide. But there's a lot of improvements here in our immune system. This is now a study, actually, I don't know if I gave you enough time to read it, but believe me, <laughs> IL-2 is better. Uh, Lots of T cells' ability to uh, fight, to recall and fight disease uh, are better in the older people. Now, <clears throat> this is a study, this is an interesting study because this is a short term study where this is, they just looked at people for a six month period. They took 16 obese women and had eight of them exercise and eight of them not exercise. And <clears throat> what they found is that the women that exercise did have increased oxidative stress. And I want to qualify that. That really is saying they had increased production of free radicals. That's all they're, they're measuring oxidative stress by just measuring the production of free radicals. They also had decreased body weight and BMI, increased VO2 max. This is actually only six, six months of exercise. And they had increased antioxidant enzyme levels. That's the key thing here. And they also had an unchanged telomere length, which I'll come back to. But I want to point out, these two things right here. <clears throat> they had increased oxidative stress, which is a bad thing. Okay, that's going to cause uh, 
accelerated aging. That is why when you take a mouse and put a mouse on a treadmill and have it run and run and run all the time, those mice die sooner than the controls. That's because exercise accelerates aging in mice because of the production of free radicals. We're not mice, okay? We've got a much better system than mice, and that's because when we exercise, we get even more increase in antioxidant enzyme levels. So as a result, even though we're producing more free radicals, we're producing more anti-free radicals, and as a result, our oxidative stress decreases in humans. Even though I said it increases there, it really decreases. It's only the free radicals that go up a little bit. And then the other thing is the telomere lengths are unchanged. And, you know, when people first published this study, they were saying, hmm, why didn't the telomeres get longer? Well, actually, there was no reason to expect them to get longer because this is an experiment to see if you can decrease the rate of telomere shortening. And in mice, when you do this experiment, you see a tremendous shortening of their telomeres due to the, all the free radicals cleave in the DNA. But in humans, we didn't see any decrease in shortening, and that's because of the antioxidant levels. So this is very exciting data. Again, exercise. And that's, that's all I'm going to say on exercise for right now, because it's only one of the things that causes free radical production and inflammation. Stress. Okay, now, I'm not exactly talking about the oxidative stress, the kind of free radical stress here. I'm kind of talking about the kind of stress your boss gives you. Okay, whatever that is. Okay, anything that affects cellular health. And <clears throat> so, several studies have been done now, and one of a really good place to look at stress is caregivers. Okay, care, especially caregivers for Alzheimer's patients. This is a very stressful thing, and so when a study was done looking at the caregivers, not the Alzheimer's patients themselves, they looked at the caregivers, they found out that their telomeres are shorter than their friends of the same age that weren't taking care of somebody. So all this stress from the inflammation and the free radical production is causing telomere shortening. So if you're taking care of an Alzheimer's patient, you've got to remember to take care of yourself. There's got to be some time off where you enjoy yourself and stuff like that. And that's really important that people don't realize, but we now have scientific data showing that not just one study. We have this other study here, it's a set, whole separate study showing that caregiving, caregiving actually decreases the rate of short, uh, telomere shortening, accelerates your aging. Uh, now this is another example of stress is childhood abuse. So a lot of people that were, had, had child abuse when they were younger, they looked at their telomeres when they were older and they actually found the people that had gone through child abuse actually now had shorter telomeres. And this was because of all this stress and abuse when they were children. Okay, depression. Depression is also something that has been very correlated with uh, 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 aging. And I, I should mention that a lot of this data actually comes from Elizabeth Blackburn's lab, one of the Nobel Prize winners. Uh, she's making a big effort to focus right now on, on uh, just psych psychology related things and telomere length. <clears throat> so here's a, just a bunch of different psychological distress type of things, all mood, mood disorders. There's major depressive disorder, bipolar with no anxiety, and bipolar with anxiety. And in all cases, the average telomeres were shorter than the controls shown on the left. Obesity, diet, antioxidants, and smoking. Now, I've talked about all these already, but I'm now going to show some data. <clears throat> this is now, for those of you that don't know what a z-score is, the x-axis is z-score. Z-score just means how far this population is, is away from the average. So, for instance, uh, uh, let's, let's take an easy one to figure out, total fat there. So, if, you have, if, you're, if you're a group of people that have a lot of high fat, you'll find out that your telomeres are shorter than the average people. So, that, like a minus two and a half there, something like that. <clears throat> so, what this is showing is that healthy diets, whole grains, cereal fiber, fiber, vitamin E, vitamin E is an antioxidant, all these things cause people to have longer telomeres than the average population. But like things like linoic acid, uh, <clears throat> polyunsaturated fatty acids, total fat, waist hip ratios, waist BMI, all these things are now s causing shorter telomeres. And, you know, if you haven't noticed, the references are all on the bottom, and if you want to find out more information. And I'll, I'll be providing information on how you can get more information on all this later. 
<clears throat> again, more data on obesity and smoking. Again, if you just look at these graphs, you'll see that telomeres get shorter with, when you're more obese, uh, or when uh, serum leptin is, is high. Serum leptin is very correlated with obesity. Um, smoking, again, you see a decrease in smoking with the more, more cigarettes you smoke, or the more pack years, packs of cigarettes per year that you smoke. Let's see. Okay, here's another data on smoking, showing pack years. Okay, omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are something that's been recently shown to affect telomere length. So <clears throat> this is showing very dramatic data that the more omega-3 fatty acids that you take, the more that you have in your system, the long and the longer you've been taking them, the longer your telomeres. Attitude. Th these are some surprising results that have come out now. Um, <clears throat> If you believe, this is self-perceived aging, if you believe that you are aging faster than your friends that are the same age, this has actually been shown that when the people were looked at, they actually had shorter telomeres. They were right, okay? So the telomere shortening, this is, so this is now kind of like a little bit unbiased in the fact that in terms of like uh, placebo controls or placebo effects and things like that, this is good data showing that the telomeres are actually having an effect on aging from the same individual talking about themselves. This is. And then pessimism. This is, this is, I thought, one of the funniest ones that have come along. It turns out if you, a lot of people were asked the question, if you uh, thought you were going to live to be 100, if you said no, you were probably right. Okay, because pessimism seems to be very correlated with aging. I don't think anybody has an explanation for this yet, but it is published in a peer-reviewed, scientifically peer-reviewed journal that pessimism is very correlated with telomere length. Some other things that have come up le lately are saying household income. Household income has actually been correlated with telomere length. The more income you have, the longer your telomeres. Well, all of us that have low household incomes know why that is. But uh, it's because it it's, it's causes a lot of stress when you don't have a lot of income. So in summary of these di different diseases, exercise will keep your telomeres long, antioxidants, omega-3s, vitamin D, don't smoke, don't be obese, reduce your stress, reduce depression, meditate, for instance, and then reduce your pessimism. So the happier you, the happier you are, the longer your telomeres are going to be. And so focus on just being happy. Okay, so now I come to what I consider the most exciting part of my talk, and that's what's in the future. And actually, as you'll find from the next two talks there's in, in some of the booths here, there are already things available now that you can do that will lengthen your telomeres a bit. <clears throat> okay, so can we increase the length of our telomeres? And so for those of you that want to drink all you want, don't worry about it. Those that want to take human growth hormone, don't worry about it because this is the future now. This is what we're going to be having in the future, and it's not that far away. I think we're going to be in clinical studies within three years and have FDA approval in about 15 to 20 years. This all comes down to the enzyme telomerase. If you remember the very first slide I showed, I said that I led the research that discovered this enzyme, human telomerase. Uh, when the Nobel Prize, well, I'll come back to the Nobel Prize winners later, but this enzyme has really had a big impact on the scientific community, as I'll show later. The, what, what, if you look at this, you can see the green squiggly thing. That's actually the DNA, shown as the double helix there. And at the very tip of that DNA, you see this factory-looking thing, which is telomerase. It's an enzyme, and what it's doing is it's adding bases onto the tip of the DNA to make it longer. So the G's, the A's, the C's, and T's are actually the basis. So again, what does telomerase do? Let's go back to this bricklaying model. So it, it turns out, let, let me just say first, that the reason why we thought that there had to be an enzyme like this is because I keep saying that all of our cells in our body, when they divide, our telomeres get shorter. But there's actually one cell type in our body where the telomeres do not get shorter, and that's our reproductive cells. And that's why our children are born with longer telomeres than we have, because throughout the cycle of production of sperm and eggs, there's no telomere shortening. And so when the child is born, 
it's got telomeres, or when it's first conceived, it's got telomeres a length of 15,000 bases. Well, why is that? I've just, you know, been saying that there's all this telomere shortening. Why is it that it doesn't occur in these cells? So there had to be some enzyme that's occur that exists inside our reproductive cells that prevents telomere shortening. Well, when this was first, people started realizing this, there was a big, big uh, battle to see who could discover what this is. And my team discovered this was the first. We discovered this back in the mid-1990s, a human enzyme called telomerase. And what telomerase does, I'm going to show on this bricklaying model again. Now, in our reproductive cells, we still have the bricklayer that when he gets to the end of this wall, he's going to fall off. But like an angel, telomerase comes in and replaces that brick. And so, again, every time the cell divides, in our reproductive cells, the enzyme DNA polymerase 1 is going to fall off, and that angel is going to replace that. And that's what happens throughout our uh, reproductive cell division. They never actually get shorter. And the best example, I usually, when I'm giving a talk at a scientific talk or something like that, I show lots of data showing how this is true and how that, that experiments have been done that where we can now take this enzyme and put it into human skin cells, for instance, and show that those skin cells become younger, too. But this is a really exciting data that just was published just about a year ago, and it just makes all the other data worth, not, not worth talking about. This is a Dr. Ron DePennell, shown in the last author on this paper. The, the title of this paper really isn't that explicit, but the, the press releases were, Telomerase Reverses the Aging Process. And so <clears throat> this is something that I'll explain in a little more detail in a few minutes, but I think this is a very, very important thing for Orlando, Florida, okay? Because what he did is he reversed aging in mice. And so this is what we want to see, and we want to make this true for the future in humans. But what I want to do right now is I want to show a video from a news report by Diane Sawyer just shortly after this experiment was done. And even though with these videos, I still don't understand why 99.99% of the world doesn't even know about this. The most exciting kind of science going on right now for human health and lifespan, and most people don't even know it. But it did make an ABC News with Diane Sawyer. And now, eternal youth. Is it in a cage around the corner? News tonight of a breakthrough for some pioneering mice. But we always wonder, what does a fountain of youth for rodents Reveal for humans? Here's Sharon Alfonsi reporting. I feel tremendous. In the movie Cocoon, it's a swimming pool that turns back the clock for a group of senior citizens. But now researchers have found a way not just to stop, but reverse the aging process. The key is something called a telomere. We all have them. They're the tips or caps of your chromosome, seen here in yellow. This is what it looks like in a young adult. But as you grow older, the telomeres become damaged and frayed. And as they stop working, we start aging, experiencing things like hearing and memory loss. Scientists took mice who were prematurely aged, added an enzyme, and essentially turned their telomeres back on. You can see it before the enzyme, after. Their brain function improved. Their fertility was restored. It was a, a remarkable uh, reversal of the aging process. Look at this picture. The mouse on the right has bad skin, gray hair, and is balding. But the one on the left had its telomeres flipped back on. And you could see that uh, essentially you now have a dark coat color, uh, that the hair uh, is restored, that the coat uh, has a nice healthy sheen to it. Even more dramatic, the change in brain size. This is before the mice had 75% of a normal brain, like a patient with severe Alzheimer's. But after the telomeres were reactivated, the brain returns to normal size. As for humans, while it is just one factor, scientists now say by looking at our blood cells and measuring those telomeres, you can get a better idea of how well you'll age. The longer the telomere, the better the chances for a more graceful aging. But as for tinkering with them and turning back our aging process, researchers say we still have a long way to go. Sharon Alfonsi, ABC News, New York. Well, that's actually very exciting. I, I'm. I'm thrilled that this is actually the very first, or the best proof of concept that we've ever had that what we're doing at Sierra Sciences will actually succeed at reversing human aging. I used to stand on stage and I wouldn't say that because I'm, I don't want to come across as like 
the quacks and charlatans that have done a really good job of discrediting the anti-aging world for the last 4,000 years. <clears throat> but now we have real science. Ron DePennell is actually not just a shabby science, he's the head of MD Anderson right now. And so this is really good data. <clears throat> he's mostly a cancer researcher, and he's, he's actually, <clears throat> he was one of the skeptics before that said that telomere length, increasing telomere lengths would not reverse aging. This was actually a cancer research study that he was doing, and he was very surprised. So Ron DePennell is no longer a skeptic. He believes that lengthening telomeres will reverse aging. Another thing that's very exciting that came out of this video is this is the first data that we've seen that actually suggests that we can reverse Alzheimer's. These brains in these mice got actually bigger, which is, you know, we, we know brains, brains don't normally have cell division. Well, now we know that they do. <clears throat> but it, it says that lengthening telomeres could reverse the effects of telomeres. And there's been a lot of press. A lot of you have probably seen, there's several booths here that actually have this magazine article of me and uh, Popular Science just last August. Uh, it's a good 11-page article talking about the research and stuff like that. But it, it's, it's because this whole field is just actually exploding right now. It's 20 years old, but people have only just begun to learn about what we're doing in research just about two years ago, and it's just exploding right now. So not only there has been Popular Science, there's been Elle magazine, Prosper magazine. I've been in two documentaries now, and three others are on, being made right now. Uh, CNBC Business Magazine uh, did a big article. Uh, as you already saw, the Today Show just did a thing just last December. And <clears throat> there's more and more. It's right now, the general public is starting to learn that there's something really amazing coming along here right now. And so what I want to do is I want to just go back in time here and talk about where did this all begin? Well, it all began in, in the early 1960s when a guy named Leonard Hayflick was growing human cells in a Petri dish. And at the, before then, everybody thought that when you grow human cells in a Petri dish, they're just going to divide and divide and never stop. But he found that they would only divide a certain number of times and then stop and go into a phase that was later termed called senescence. <clears throat> and the time that they stopped became known as the Hayflick limit. And there's several books on the subject, you can learn more about that. But most notably, he showed that when he took cells, let's say skin cells, from a young person and counted the number of times they would divide before they reached the Hayflick limit, the number was a lot. It would be like 50 to 100 different cell divisions uh, if you were really young. But when he took an, cells from a middle-aged person and divided them, he found they'd only divide like 25 times. And then when he took cells from a really old person, let's say 90 years old, he'd find out they'd only divide five times. So this is a very important discovery because it said the cells know how old they are. Okay, the cells know their age. He had no idea what it was, but cells can tell time. They know how old they are. So there was some type of clock that was ticking inside of human cells that told them how old they are. He was actually booed. <laughs> Nobody believed him, thought somebody was something wrong. It took 10 years before the next stage of this occurred. And that's when two scientists, uh, one of the Nobel Prize winners for discovering DNA, uh, James Watson, Jim Watson, and also Alexei Olivnikov from uh, Russia, both published at the same time that everything we know about how DNA replicates doesn't explain how the very tips of the chromosomes are replicated. They recognize that, you know, that bricklayer is going to fall off the wall. <clears throat> and so they, they both published theoretical papers predicting this, and then it was verified from a lot of publications right afterwards that, in fact, yes, the telomeres do short. Okay, so the bottom axis, axis of this graph is years. The y-axis is the number of publications. So as you can see, there were very, very few publications back then on anything related to telomere biology. <clears throat> Things should have changed a little bit when Elizabeth Blackburn and Carol Greider, the present Nobel Prize winners in this field, discovered an enzyme when they were studying this pond scum organism that they were working on called tetrahymena. They were wondering, well, why, why is this organism never die? Why does it just keep dividing, 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 and remain immortal? 
Shouldn't its telomeres be shortening like we've seen in everything else? Well, they discovered that they discovered an enzyme called telomerase in tetrahymena. They published that in about 1984, <clears throat> and that was an exciting publication for anybody studying tetrahymena, but it really didn't get all the press. Nobody put any connections to how this affected human disease or aging of any, any kind. So then a guy named, in 1990, a guy named Calvin Harley, Dr. Calvin Harley, connected all the dots and wrote a paper called The Telomere Theory of Aging. He made this hypothesis that the reason why we age is because the tips of our chromosomes get shorter. Again, there were a lot of people that just really questioned it, but a few people, including myself, just stopped everything we're doing to try to find telomerase. My, I have dedicated my entire life now to trying to figure out this telomere biology, as well as, as several other people, some of the speakers coming up and the people I introduced before, David Cross and Greta Blackburn. We're all just totally focused on figuring all this thing out. This is going to be the greatest medical breakthrough of all time when we get it all figured out. So we put this paper together. A few years after that, I ended up, my team ended up discovering the enzyme human telomerase. And as I said, this was such a major discovery that the, me and three of the scientists I was working with uh, were awarded the second place for United States Inventor of the Year. And the only reason we only got second place was because that happened to be the same year that the HIV protease inhibitor was discovered. And it was such a close tie, it was actually came down to a coin toss. Who's going to get first place, second place? So it would, usually they don't present a second place, they just give a first place. But they put us both on all the news and the press and uh, et cetera, and we got awards for it. But uh, so the discovery of human telomerase was a major turning point in what's going to happen. Now, the publications after that just skyrocketed. Okay? Now that we had discovered human telomerase, scientists all over the world were getting hold of this enzyme from us and starting to do research. And this is where all these diseases I talked about. Every paper was, somebody was looking at heart disease, somebody else was looking at Alzheimer's, somebody else was looking at osteoporosis. They were finding that telomeres were correlating to all this. So large number of publications in a very short period of time after we discovered human telomerase. And the Nobel Prize Committee said, well, well, you know, something's going on here. Somebody should be awarded a Nobel Prize for this. And so in 2000, eight or 2009, I think it was, the Nobel Prize was awarded to the scientist that made the first discovery of telomerase in, it wasn't humans, but tetrahymena. And, and they were the people that I congratulated before, Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Greider, and Jack Stosak. So the Nobel Prize, being awarded the Nobel Prize has really made this field much more acceptable. And it's because anybody working in anti-aging is always got, you know, something that must be wrong with that person because uh, or they're just out to con you into thinking that they have some type of thing that's going to make you live longer and you're going to take it because it's going to take 40 years before you know if it works. They're long gone and they, but they, with your money. But now aging has really, anti-aging has really become a big focus in peer-reviewed science. <clears throat> so I had mentioned before that there are multiple sticks of dynamite. And the three most popular ones, the, th the, the theories, the most accepted theories are that we all age by mitochondria dysfunction, oxidative stress, and telomere shortening. It's just that in mice, they have a sh different shorter, the, the, the fuse is shorter for one type of aging than in humans. But what now has been done by the same author that published this uh, paper that I talked about with re age reversal in mice, has now shown that the oxidative stress and the mitochondria dysfunction are actually caused by telomere shortening. So this is a publication that they published just earlier in 2011. The press, release, press releases said aging theories are unified. So now, not only, you know, maybe there's only one stick of dynamite. I, I, I'm not betting on that. I think there's gonna be a lot we have to do, but I think when we figure out a way to prevent telomere shortening, that's going to give me at least 50 more years to figure out how to solve the other problems of aging. And remember, I'm obsessed with living forever. Uh, so I'm going to spend all my time working on this. <clears throat> okay, so this is just a pictorial thing showing that, that telomeres are affecting both oxidative stress and mitochondria dysfunction too. 
Something else that's, I think, very important, anybody who has a pet dog or cat, we have shown that, that you know, I, I mentioned that 99.99% .99 of all the animals on the planet don't age by telomere shortening, but there's that 0.01 that do, and that 0.01 is shown here. These are the only animals that have ever been discovered on the planet that age by telomere shortening. They have telomere shortening as the shortest, the dynamite with the shortest fuse. That's dogs, cats, horses, primates, deer, sheep, and pigs, okay? Well, deer, sheep, and pigs probably are not going to benefit tremendously from this because nobody's going to want to spend a lot of money to extend their lifespan. But cats, dogs, and horses, we all have pets. Wouldn't it be nice if we could keep those pets young and alive and healthy, and healthy more important than anything? It's the saddest thing when an animal gets, gets old and you have to put it down. And Great Danes, they're the nicest dog in the world, but do you know, realize they only live to be about seven years old? They die of old age at seven? That's, that's horrible. So, so we think that this is a future market for uh, telomere lengthening drugs that would come along. <clears throat> and then those are the animals that do shorten by, uh, they age by telomere shortening, but there's a lot of animals that don't age by telomere shortening. They don't have any telomere shortening at all, and some animals are now being shown to be possibly immortal. And lobsters are the best example of that. Nobody's ever found an old lobster. All right? There might... <laughs> we eat them too fast. But even, even in the laboratory, even in the laboratory, they have not found any aging process in lobsters. Lobsters live well beyond 100 years. And it was recently discovered that they have telomerase turned on in all their cells, just like what I want to do with all of us. I want to turn telomerase on in all of our cells. I want to keep our telomeres long. They already have it. They have telomerase turned on. They're, they're a classic example of what keeping telomeres long can do. They have no aging process, no known aging process at all. And remember I told you at the beginning, some people used to think that turning on telomerase would cause cancer. These, these lobsters have no cancer. They're, they're, it's, it's, a classic example of everything we want to do here. So we all want to become lobsters eventually. The same is true for tortoises. I mean, if you look at Encyclopedia Britannica in 1960, it used to say tortoises lived to be 80 years old. Well, in 1980, it said they lived to be 100 years old. In 2000, it said be, they lived to be 120 years old. So nobody knew how old tortoises could live but that's because nobody ever bothered to ask the question until like 100 years ago. So people started, you know, after Darwin, people started looking at, that was more than 100 years ago, but people started looking at how long do some animals live? What's their lifespan? And they found that some of them just never seem to age. That includes tortoises, clams, a lot of different types of whales. Uh, uh, there's a particular type of whale that recently somebody Found, uh, caught a whale and it had a harpoon in it already. And the harpoon was carbon dated to be 130 years old. So that whale was more than 130 years old. And then there's a lot of fish. Now fish, fish of course, do die of old age, but they, they die from, they, they don't die of actually of old age. You heard about the trout swimming upstream, they lay their eggs and suddenly they die. Well, that's not really aging. That's some program that's ticked into like a, bomb that explodes inside of them. But uh, a lot of fish don't seem to have any aging process. So <clears throat> it's, it's, it's looking like it's possible that we could actually succeed at, at stopping the aging process in our cells by figuring out how to control the length of telomeres. And I should mention that all these animals here have telomerase turned on in all their cells. Okay, there are already some telomerase inducers on the market. They're not as, as potent as what we would like to get in the future. But I would encourage everybody to do everything they can to extend their lifespan and health span as long as you can right now, just to increase the chances that you're still around when the real things, the real potent things come along. And th there's three on the market right now. It's TA65 from TA Sciences. This is the first product that came on the market about five years ago. And Product B from Isagenics, the relatively new product that was just launched in August. Then there's T-Activator 100, the absolute newest product from Telomere Biosciences. And you can learn a lot more about these by talking to people at the booths here and stuff today. <clears throat> but I, I'm bringing this up because this is 
we don't have really have any data that's showing that lengthening telomeres in humans will actually affect our health. It's all been theory. But now there has been one clinical study done with TA65. This is a, a really odd thing that I want to just comment on. I'm, I'm a pharmaceutical scientist, uh, uh, yeah, pharmaceutical researcher. I'm, I'm, I'm used to developing drugs, taking them through the FDA, getting, getting approval in heart disease, cancer research, inflammation, et cetera. But what I've always found is that <clears throat> you do the clinical study first and then put the drug on the market after the clinical study looks good. When all these natural product companies, which is a brand new experience for me, I'm finding that it's the exact opposite. You put it on the market and then you do the clinical study, okay? Which seems a little odd, but the good news is that most of the natural products are already uh, defined by the FDA as GRAS, G-R-A-S, for generally regarded as safe. And so that's why they can do this. They can put the drug, or they don't call it a drug in that field, they call it a nutraceutical or natural product. They put it on the market and then do their clinical study. So the TA65 clinical study had some pretty exciting news. This is, this is the paper. You can see I'm an author on this, on this study. I participated in this study. And <clears throat> the first thing that we did is we verified that TA65 really does turn on telomerase. This is a complicated slide here. What it is, is it's an electrophoresis gel. And every column that you see in this gel is a different sample that was tested. And so when a cell produces telomerase, you actually can see a ladder that forms on this gel. And so if you look at the far left, you can see that some control samples that we had that of cells that naturally produce telomerase, they form some really nice ladders. And we use that as a standard marker as so we have different concentrations of that same ladder. When in the next two lanes over, next two columns, these are cells that were human cells, human skin cells, that actually were untreated, and you can see that there's no ladder in those, those particular columns. And then everything after that are samples, or skin, human skin cells that were treated with TA65, and you can see a faint ladder in every one of them. So it's saying that TA65 is turning on telomerase, which is a really important thing for the rest of the study. Here, now I've been saying that average telomere length is uh, uh, correlated with aging, and I also said that looking at the shortest telomeres was even better correlated. Well, <clears throat> it turns out that TA65 is, is just that borderline where it actually does has no effect on the average telomere length. The average telomere length still increase, but the shortest telomeres, let's say, the average telomere length still decrease, but in TA65, people taking TA65 for more than a year, they saw that their shortest telomeres actually got longer. This is, this is a study of, uh, um, 12 different people, uh, all of which were taking TA65 for a year. And the black bar is before and the gray bar is after they've been on it for a year, showing that they're, the length of their, or the abundance of short telomeres. And you can see that in every case except for two, the abundance of short telomeres decreased in these patients. The only two examples, you can look at number five and number seven, they were the youngest people. They were the people that, you know, had the shortest, the fewest number of abundant telomeres to begin with. And that's, this is probably saying that they had so few abundant telomeres that, that they um, um, uh, didn't have enough to really get a good measurement of. And so, but this is, so 10 out of 12 people actually showed that their longest telomeres, the abundance of short telomeres decreased. And I can tell you that some of these people that are actually in this study are in this room right now. Um, so, uh, and they can volunteer themselves if they want because of, this is their subjects right now. Um, but in addition, okay, so I said that telomerase was induced and that short telomeres were lengthened. Well, we also saw, we looked at a bunch of immune different functions. We saw that CD28 negative T cells decreased. CD28 ne negative T cells, by the way, are, are something that's when the, one of the biggest, strongest correlations of biomarkers in aging that's ever been seen. So the number of CD28 negative T cells definitely goes up. So the number of CD28 positive T cells goes down with age. But TA65 actually reversed this. So it's saying that the, 
average, the short telomeres might be playing a bigger role than we thought. Natural killer cells went down, naive T cells went down, blood pressure went up, sorry. Uh, blood pressure went down, skin elasticity went up, bone density went up, cholesterol went down, homocysteine went down, cognitive function, again, related to Alzheimer's and things like that, went up, and glucose levels went down. So this was very exciting. This was the very first proof, or let's say, suggestion of concept that we'd ever seen in actual humans. Now, product B is also, from Isagenics, is also getting ready to start a clinical trial right now. The slides that I have are a little old, a little outdated, uh, but uh, because there's, they, they haven't started it, but they're still in the planning stages. But a few months ago, they were planning on doing 30 random subjects that might go up, uh, double-blind, placebo-controlled. Uh, they're going to have baseline, three months, six months, 12 months, and just adverse effects, like does anybody suffer any side effects, will be looked at. And that's an important thing that, let me go back to the TA65 study for a second. Nobody in the study suffered any adverse side effects. In fact, you, there was enough people in the study that you could say that the fact that not a single person during that year got cancer. And the population in general would have had several people get cancer in that group in that time frame, is suggesting that, that it's only a suggestion right now, is suggesting that actually increasing your telomere lengths can decrease your chances of getting cancer. So adverse effects will be tracked, you know, will people get cancer, will they get other diseases and stuff like that, but I think it's the TA65 has already provided good data showing that they won't. <clears throat> now the plan with the product B clinical study, in fact, I'm, I'm gonna show this, but if anybody has any suggestions since I'm involved in the clinical study myself, of anything that you'd like to have looked at, let me know. But one of the things that unfortunately the TA65 study didn't do is didn't take pictures of the people. Because I don't think they expected the results to be as dramatic as they were. So the product B study, they're gonna take pictures of faces, hands, et cetera, just to show that there's a difference. Because a lot of the people taking TA65, including myself, let me say I was one of the people in that TA65 study, <clears throat> I saw a, a bunch of different changes in myself. My running improved, my running got a lot better, um, my uh, age boss disappeared on my hands, my vision got better, and I was just, I wish I had pictures of that beforehand. <clears throat> I'm also taking, I, I, by the way, I take everything, so I'm not, if I'm talking about products, it's not like I'm trying to market something, I take them all, and that's because, as you know, about my obsession. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, uh, okay, so the product is going to look at short telomeres, just like TA65 did. Uh, waist circumference, body mass, you can look all these through this list. Uh, see if, if there's anything missing that you'd really like to see, let me know, because I have some influence there. Um, on and on and on. <clears throat> I'll let you read it for a few seconds. Calcium, what's that? Calcium score, okay, I'll recommend that. Um, now, I'm not a medical doctor, but if any of you are interested in talking to medical doctors, they're doing a lot of study on telomeres right now. Here's three of them, Dr. Mickey Shima, Dr. Ed Park, Dr. Dennis Harper. You should have their phone numbers in your books and stuff like that. They've all provided me with their phone numbers and said I could present them to anybody that wants, has questions that they feel more appropriate talking to a medical doctor about. Dr. Dennis Harper is actually the person heading up the product B clinical study. Okay, so <clears throat> now, now I want to talk about what I'm doing. This is Sierra Sciences. As it was said before, our model is cure aging or die trying. Uh, I guarantee we're going to succeed at one of those. Um, <clears throat> but I want everybody to know that if I succeed at the later one, my tombstone's going to say, I tried my best not to be here. Okay? <laughs> I want it known that that's the case. Okay, so we are, we are located in Reno, Nevada. We were founded in 1999, I'm the founder. This is our scientific team. Our, it changes a lot, but I'm trying to pick the scientific team that was around during most of the data that I'm gonna show. Uh, these are just now pictures of the lab. These are samples we're testing. I'm just gonna show a bunch of pictures to let you know we have real science. I spend most of my time in a lab coat. Uh, I'm not always on stage like this, though lately I've been a lot. Um, 
big demand for people. A lot of people want to know about what's going on. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is a scientist working. This, th we grow these cells in these things called microtiter dishes. There's me. Uh, now, this is, this is the heart of our research, and these are robotics. These are robotic systems. There are actually two pictures in this, two robots in this picture that, r that can run night and day testing samples for samples that would turn on telomerase to make things stronger than TA65, product B, T activator 100. These are now pharmaceuticals that we're doing, but we're also looking at natural products to look for nat strong natural products too. We want to find anything that will give us a really potent telomerase activator. And the way we're doing it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some liberties here in kind of like uh, talking about molecular biology in almost as bad as using a bricklayer model to explain DNA replication. But in our body, we have our genes. And <clears throat> One of those genes on chromosome 5, near the tip, is actually producing the telomerase enzyme. Okay? It's produced by the telomerase gene. And like every gene in our chromosomes, there's some regulatory element next to it. It's like an, a light switch, an on-off switch, that turns it off and on. Well, in our reproductive cells, telomerase gets produced by our, our telomerase gene. But in all the other cells in our body, there's this protein that binds to that regulatory element and shuts it off. And as a result, telomerase is not produced. Why that's the case, nobody knows. But it's almost certainly that it has something to do with evolution. There's, like, for instance, if we just keep getting older and older and older, we, we end up competing with the younger people, or the, let's say we're some type of other animal. All animals, so, well, most animals show some type of aging. Why that is, is only because it, in order for the gene pool to be changing enough to adapt to the environment, we've got to get rid of the older people so that the young genes can survive. And so there's no evolutionary advantage to living longer than it takes to raise your young. After that, you're just in the way. So uh, species that survive better are the ones that get rid of their people that are in their way and allow the young ones to survive. And so in humans, we, we, over, we solve that problem by creating this regulatory protein that shuts off the telomerase gene and triggers us to die of old age. Nowadays, I think we're a lot smarter than evolution. Uh, we can figure out our own problems. Uh, and uh, the best example of that is eyeglasses. I mean, I look around here, practically everybody, half the people here have eyeglasses on. I mean, think about it. Before eyeglasses, when, when humans had to hunt for food all the time and stuff like that, it, as soon as your vision went bad, you were dead. That was part of evolution. Okay? Well, eyeglasses. We, we outsmarted evolution with eyeglasses. And there's a lot of different examples you can use there. So I'm not really worried about are we messing around with nature here because I think we're, we're smart enough to figure out how to deal with it. We've, there's true there's been cases where we've been shown we're pretty dumb in, in dealing with nature, but, but I think that we will adapt somehow to overcome the fact that humans might eventually stop aging. Okay, so in, our repro in our, all the cells besides our reproductive cells, we have this repressor protein shutting off the telomerase gene. <clears throat> okay, so in, in oh, see, I only got six minutes left. Okay, so I better rush here. Uh, the gene is repressed in all of our other cells it's by the repressor, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with a drug that that binds to the telomerase, the, the repressor, removes it, and turns, off the, uh, turns on the telomerase gene. And that's what we're trying to do here. So far, we've screened 257,163 chemicals and natural substances. We have found 57 families of hits. We found our first one in 2007, and we've now found 57 different families of chemicals that would turn on telomerase gene. gene. This is a dream come true for a type of science called medicinal chemistry, where these, these things can be improved to increase their activity and decrease their uh, uh, toxicity. And so we, we, we talk about these hits on a scale from 0 to 100, where 0 means a normal cell that doesn't produce any telomerase, and 100 is the, the lowest amount of telomerase that is needed to make a human cell become immortal. And so. Right, a, 
right away, like in 2007, we found, and this is now showing a clock now, um, it's ticking a little bit faster. We all feel like aging is going faster than it should. But <clears throat> what I'm showing here is that we have a clock that's ticking inside of our cells, and with no treatment, this is the rate that it ticks. Okay, so right away, we found some weak, weak telomerase inducers, uh, including some of the ones that I've mentioned earlier, the natural products. They're kind of weak, and will slow down that clock a little bit. And now with the medicinal chemistry that we're doing, we think it's going to be very soon where we're going to slow that clock down even more. And we think that in less than three years from now, we're going to find, uh, that's, let's say three years after we find the funding that we need to do this work, because it all requires funding, it's a very expensive research, <clears throat> we think we're going to have something that's going to be a score of 100 and stop aging. And then right after that, we're going to knock the roof off the house with very strong things that are going to reverse aging. And this is only something I've been willing to say in the last year, ever since Rhonda Pinnell did this experiment where we reversed aging in mice, which is the best proof of concept ever we've ever had. So I think this is going to happen really soon. And I want to say the planet is about to change and get used to it, and I think you're going to see this a lot in the pharmaceutical industry, in, in the pharmacy industry. So, any questions? Remember, my model is cure aging or die trying. And let me say, because I've only got four minutes for questions, unless they give me longer, you can go to www.cureagingordietrying.com, or if you have questions, you can also email me at questionsforbill at yahoo.com, and I will respond to most of them. <laughs> a lot of times I get a lot of questions. So, any questions? Yes, would you uh, comment on vitamin D and uh, telomerase and what uh, you're seeing from that in that direction? Well, vitamin D has definitely been shown. Did I show a publication on that or not? Maybe I didn't. Uh, vitamin D has been shown by more than one publication now that people who take high levels of vitamin D throughout their lives have longer telomeres than people that don't. So vitamin D, omega-3s, uh, and antioxidants are the main three things that have been published to actually show longer telomeres from use. They don't turn telomerase on, they just decrease the rate of telomere shortening. Any other questions? She's a woman that died of cancer back in the 1950s, and the doctors took some of her cancer and cultured it. And they found that it naturally produced telomerase and the cells were immortal because of the, of the uh, uh, telomeres not shortening. And so when I, and so they, they, they first tried to disguise her her uh, name, and so they were, everybody was told her name was Helen Lane instead of Henrietta Lacks. Helen Lane, you know, from Superman. And uh, so the cell line became HeLa, H-E for Helen, L-A for Lane. Okay, but then it was later after HeLa became such a very important cell line that's used all over the world, uh, they announced that her name was Henrietta Lacks, really, and so the name still changed HeLa. But when I, when I talked about that 100 score, that was the cell line that I used, the HeLa cell line. And that, that woman now has become so famous for donating those cells when she died that uh, they've actually published a book on her right now, on her life and stuff. So thanks for bringing that up. Any other questions? Well, you can Google all of them. You can find out where to get them. But you know, two, of the, two of the products are here, in fact, uh, you know, you can find them in the booths here. Um, in order to get your telomeres measured, there's SpectraCell, Repeat Diagnostics, and Life Length, and, and a new company called Telome Health. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I'm not supposed to be marketing, but I do want to say that measuring the abundance of short telomeres, I think, is the best biomarker of aging and health. It's a lot better than average telomere. And LifeLength is the only company that does that so far in the world. And they're, they're in Madrid, Spain, but they've just opened up offices in Florida so that now people in America can send their blood samples there to get tested. How much does it cost? Uh, it costs about $700 for test. Any other questions? Do we know why that protein doesn't bind to the telomerase regulator in reproductive cells? Because it's not produced is what we're guessing. But <clears throat> it, it, we don't know. In fact, the first seven years of my company was devoted just trying to figure that question out. Nobody's figured that out yet. So about seven years, about six years ago, we decided maybe the best way to find out 
what that protein is or how it works is to first find a drug that prevents that protein from binding, and it binds to it. And then we can identify that protein by using our drug like a bait on a fishing hook to pull that protein out of a soup of, of human proteins. So we don't know yet, but that's a big, big prize there when somebody figures that one out. Is telomerase considered a systemic enzyme? Uh, well, because it, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's naturally found inside of our cells, okay? So it's, uh, uh, it's turned off all the time, except in our reproductive cells. In fact, human embryonic stem cells are the only cells that actually produce telomerase. It, the, every, some cells produce it at very low levels, but it might be just an artifact of cell division. <clears throat> um, does that answer your question? It's, it's, no, because, you know, there are systemic enzymes out there that when you take these systemic enzymes, it, it, you know, your, your body functions are much better. But are you, so are you asking, like, injection of telomerase? Will that have any effect? No, that, no, orally. Or, like, orally or anything. Well, see, most enzymes don't survive the stomach, okay? Uh, the acid just chews them up. And then also most enzymes are too big to get inside of human cells. So some enzymes people can take, and how they survive the stomach, I'm not exactly certain. Maybe they're small and very stable, but they don't get inside of human cells. They, they work outside the cell. Human telomerase needs to get inside the human cell in order to work. And so any effort to try to like feed a person telomerase, in fact, <clears throat> I, I said quacks and charlatans have been discrediting this field for thousands of years. There are people out there right now trying to tell you that they have telomerase in a bottle and you just can take it. Don't believe them. It's not, it, it can't be done. It, it doesn't work. You can't, you can't take an enzyme that big and expect it to get inside your cells. Yes? So when it comes to monitoring telomere lengths and such, um, do they, like these companies that you were just talking about, do they get measurements from different tissues? Because as you were saying, like with AIDS patients, their immune telomeres are shorter than their other cell telomeres, right? Yes. So is, is that how they monitor? Like, you know, when somebody says, I want to get my telomere length measured, it's not, it's not like your shoe, right? They mostly do it from the blood. That's because the blood is the easiest to get. But in research, we would test all different types of tissues. It's just that patients don't really like the pain that they have to go through. Uh, it's like essentially taking, you know, a paper hole, clipper, thing, some makes holes in papers. You take a bunch of skin like that and snap a hole, and you take that little hole there and test it. Well, I don't think the patients like that too much. But immune system, most anti-aging scientists believe that the number one cause of aging is a weakened immune system, and the best way to measure the immune system is in the blood. Are you running into any resistance from folks considering the moral, political, societal, cultural implications of living forever? Well, I have written a book. I'm not here to market the book, uh, but uh, it's a free book. You can find it on my website. And we do discuss all those issues. And uh, we've gone to the, you know, leading authorities on each of those issues and gotten quotes from them and stuff like that. But I, I personally believe that, you know, humans are used to change. Uh, and look at the World Wide Web. Look at how much that changed the way we do everything. And we just adapted to it just seamlessly. You know, like, now how could we possibly live without it? But we also talked to religious leaders, and, and it's talked about in that book. But then, unfortunately, the space program is searching for other planets. And 581, Gleesey 581G is only 20 light years away from here. So it's uh, hopefully by 50 years, we'll figure out a way to get people there. And that planet's about four times larger than Earth. So, uh, you know, humans will figure it out. But I personally, I don't ever want to give up my life just so the future generations can be happier. I want to be around and enjoy it with them. Round of applause for Dr. Thank Bill Thank you very Andrews. much. And I, I will be available for a few hours before I have to fly out to give another presentation tomorrow in San Jose. So if people have more questions, just stop by and see me.